Hey everybody, Johnny here. In the last video in this series, we added the ability to use any object in our pile instead of just cubes that were one by one by one. In this video, we want to take a look at how we could create multiple random piles of objects rather than just two that you have a slider between them. Let's get into it. Currently, the group index is driven by this compare node, where we're simply comparing the index of each item to a value and sticking them either in pile 0 or pile 1, respectively. Now we want to figure out a way to create multiple random piles and do that instead. I'm going to disconnect my index node and bring it over here. I'll delete my compare node and my multiply node. Now if we wanted to have multiple piles that had even amounts of rings in them, we could do that this way. If we take our index and put it into our group index, you'll see that all of the rings now collapse into one. That's because we've created a separate group for every ring. If instead of that we wanted a repeating pattern, we can use the modulo math operator to do that. If we set the value of our modulo to something like 3, as the indexes come in, they're going to loop through the values of 0, 1, and 2 until the indexes run out. Of course again, these piles are all overlapping, so like before, I'm going to duplicate this node and turn it into a multiply node. I'll take the value of my modulo and use that for one of the values, and then I'll use my split difference again as this multiply value. I'll use this to drive the x component of my position. Now as I increase the value of my modulo to say 4, I get 4 piles, or 5. And you'll see, depending on how many rings we have, they're going to get spread out as evenly as possible going across the bottom. So they'll be distributed across the five piles, and since there were only four more left, those go here. If I were to increase the count, you'll see that that works like that. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and take my split input that I had before and use that to drive my number of piles. I could also go to my end panel and rename split into piles. I'm going to go ahead and clean things up a bit. So there you have it. Now we've split our rings into multiple piles and we can select how many piles we want. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you're finding it fascinating and I hope it's inspiring you to make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.